The date add function will return a date after which a certain time or date interval has been added or subtracted. And in this example, I have a query set up to display all of the orders listed in my database. However, I don't want to show all of the orders in my database. I just want to display the orders from the last three months. So, for that, I'm going to need to use the date add function as the criteria to filter my transaction date to display only the orders from the previous three months, whatever those might be depending on when the query is run. So, in other words, this query's results will change from day to day, month to month, etc. Now, to create the function, let's go back into Design View and click in the Criteria slot underneath Transaction Date. Then I'm going to take my mouse and hover right over this funky looking icon right there, that little magic wand. That is your Expression Builder button and clicking it will launch your Expression Builder, which is where we're going to create our function. Now to access our access built-in functions, there's a functions folder in the far left pane. Double clicking that folder will open up the folder to reveal two more subfolders. And then clicking once on the built-in functions folder will display our subcategories for all of our built-in functions in the center pane. Now the date add function, since it is a kind of date function, will be housed in the date time category. And clicking once on date time will open up to reveal all of your date time functions in the far right pane. And date add should be towards the top. To use this function, simply double click your mouse right on top of date add and access will add the date time function to this top pane and list out all of the function's arguments. Now the first one here, interval, interval represents the time or date interval that you wish to add by. And it can be any of the intervals listed here. YYY stands for year, Q for quarter, M for month, Y for the day of the year, D for day, W for weekday, WW for week, H for hour, N as in no for minute because you know M's already taken for month and last and well least S for second. And don't forget that when typing out these arguments to surround the interval with quotation marks. So jumping back to axis with the interval selected we can simply begin typing our interval out. So begin with quotation marks and we want to do three months before today's date so that interval is going to be M for months close quote and then that comma. Now number clicking once on that number placeholder will select the entire one. Our number that is going to be asking for the specific number interval and since we want to go three months in the past we want to type out a negative three. So any date that's going to appear in the past is basically going to be a negative number and any date far into the future will be then a positive number. And then the date field itself, that is going to be the date that you're calculating by, which is going to be, since we want this query to update depending on whenever we run the query, we're going to use a function to determine today's date, whatever that might be. And that function is date, open parenthesis, and close parenthesis. So here's how our expression reads so far. We have date add, open parenthesis, quotation mark, M quotation mark, comma, negative three, comma, your date function, D-A-T-E, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then another close parenthesis to close the date add function. Once you have that, go ahead, click OK. And let me just expand this field so you can see all of it. That is what our function looks like so far. Now, if we were to run the query right now, we're not going to get any results. And that's because in this particular database, there is no order that is exactly three months from today's date. What we want instead is the range of dates. So what we have to add is our greater than and equal to symbols before our date add function. And now when we run the query, Da, da, da. There we have it, all of our orders from the last three months. 
And that is one way to use the date add function inside an access query. Thanks for watching. For more great Microsoft Office tutorials, subscribe to TrainSignal's YouTube channel, TrainSignal Office. Or you can visit www.trainsignal.com for more information regarding our complete Microsoft Office training library.